Hello everyone, it's Benny, and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be creating the Ultimate Guide to Redstone, where I will be teaching you absolutely everything you need to know about Redstone, starting from the pure basics. So, to start off, I'm just going to leave Redstone completely out of the picture, because you don't need it to understand the concept of what it's supposed to be doing. So, if you take a look, you'll notice I'm in this big, empty wilderness. And in front of me, there's an igloo. So if I try going into this igloo, you'll notice, well, I can't. And the reason is, it's an iron door, and you can't open iron doors by right-clicking. But, I have a lever in my inventory, so I can place a lever on the side and flip the lever. And that opens the iron door. And this is really basic Minecraft knowledge. You've probably seen this done a million times before, and you've probably done it a million times yourself. Now, if I go in, you'll notice there's another entrance to this igloo. And it has a block that's blocking the exit. No pun intended. But this block has a piston next to it. And what I can do is I can extend the piston and push the block out of the way. So, the way I can do this is I can just place a button above the piston, and if I press the button, it'll extend the piston, and then the piston will retract again. And that'll push the block out of the way, and I can exit. And again, this is all basic Minecraft knowledge. But the point here is there are certain things in Minecraft that have more than one state, such as an iron door, which can either be open or closed, which was actually said backwards, but same difference, and pistons, which can either be extended or retracted. And these things can be changed using things like buttons or levers. And this is just the concept of sending power to something in Minecraft. It's an easy concept, hopefully, and I know there's probably a lot of people out there who said, hey, dude, this is stupidly obvious, you should get to redstone already. But trust me, I'm going somewhere with this. So now, let's say the situation was a little bit different. Instead of a piston here, I have a piece of TNT. And I want it so that my friend accidentally blows himself up. I want to set a trap. Now, I don't know about you, but my friends aren't stupid enough to press a button that's directly above a block of TNT and then just wait to get blown up. So, this introduces a bit of a problem. Now, one potential solution to this problem is rather than having the button right next to the TNT, I could go out a little ways and have the button, say, right here. And right now, they can't really see the TNT unless they look to their left. And again, we're just pretending the piston is TNT, because I don't want to blow up my amazing igloo. But, our problem if we do this, is if I press the button, it has absolutely no effect on the piston, because it's not next to it. And the solution to this is redstone. This is where redstone comes in. What redstone lets you do, is it lets you take the power that comes from things like buttons or levers, and send it to whatever you want to power, because normally, if I wanted to power the piston, I have to place this button, say, right here, and it would power the piston because the button's right next to it. But, if I get rid of rain, but again, buttons far away can't do that. So, instead of having to place the button explicitly next to what I want to power, I can just send the power using redstone. And you notice I just place down a couple pieces of redstone and press the button, it lights up because it's sending power. If I go the, the distance and hook this into the piston, you'll notice when I press the button, piston extends. We are now sending the power from the button to the piston. And if this was TNT, this would be just a tad bit less obvious than having an actual button right next to the piece of TNT. So, that's the basic concept of redstone. All it's doing is it's carrying power from a source, like a button, or a lever, and it's taking it to whatever you want to power. Now, there's actually three main components to redstone, and they let you do a couple of different things. So we already saw redstone dust, that's what's actually carrying the power. And one thing that's important to note is where you can place it, because I can place it on the ground all I want, but I can't place it anywhere else. I can't place it on walls, I can't place it under any blocks. So, yeah. 
it's smart and will automatically connect. So like right here, I have redstone dust that's going up a bit, redstone dust that's down a bit. It's smart and it connects those, but you know, you can't explicitly place redstone on walls. That's just important to know. But anyways, back to on topic. We have redstone dust that's actually carrying the power, but we also have a couple other things, like the redstone torch. In a lot of ways, this is like any other torch. You can place it on blocks, pretty much anywhere except underneath them. You can't place a torch underneath a block. And that's the basic functionality of it. It's just a slightly less bright torch. But if you place it next to redstone wire, it'll just send continuous power into it. So, if you want something that always remains powered, then the torch is what you'd be wanting to use, because if you just want this piston to stay extended forever, say, for example, you realize that having a piston exit in the side of your igloo is stupid, and you just don't want the piston to ever be unextended, place a torch, and use that to send power to the piston, piston stays extended forever. So that's all it is. It just sends power continuously, and yeah, easy enough. So, the other thing, if I place my button contraption back, which I'm actually going to do with lever this time, just for fun, the other thing is a repeater. What repeaters do is they add delay to a redstone line. So if you notice right now, the instant I flip this lever, the piston extends. There's absolutely no delay between the two events happening. But if I broke one of these pieces of redstones and replaced it with a repeater, there's a slight delay between the lever and the piston. And it's not much by default, but if I right click I can increase it, and this is maximum delay. So, you notice there's a pretty significant delay between the two events happening. And that's all the redstone repeater does. It introduces some simple delay. And if you're just talking about the basics of the basics, this is all there is to redstone. That, that's it. That's all there really is in the basics of the basics. But, of course, it goes a little bit more complicated than that. So, I'm just going to explain a couple different things that the repeater and the torch, not necessarily in that order, do. So, to start off with, I'm going to use the torch. So, actually, not the torch, repeater. What am I talking? I'm getting them mixed up, I'm sorry. So, let's say I have this redstone lamp right here, and I want to send power to it. So, if I have redstone wire, what I can do is I can place the torch next to it, and of course, it turns on. But let's say I want to go adventuring and have this redstone trail behind me, and then I can send power and turn on my lamp from wherever I am in my adventure. So I just keep going, and as you saw, it, the wire is working, it's sending power to it. And then when I get to some point in my adventure and I try turning on the lamp, you'll notice it doesn't work. And the reason is, redstone wires don't carry redstone signals forever. As, and as you can see, the redstone wire is just gradually losing power until eventually it just runs out. And this, and specifically it carries it only 15 blocks. But if you want the signal to go out further, this is the upper use of the repeater. It will renew the signal. So if I place the repeater somewhere on this line, you notice, hey, look, it's renewed the signal, and now it's going a little bit further, still not quite reaching. But, the absolute furthest I can place the repeater from the signal is right here, because this is where it finally loses power. And right here, this is the end of the signal. So, there, the end of the signal is now going into the repeater, now it's restarted, and now it's going to the actual lamp that I wanted in the first place. So there. And there you go. So, e easy enough. That's the second function of a repeater. It also renews a redstone signal. And the other thing I want to talk about, other than the repeater, is the second function of the torch, because the torch goes a little bit more complicated than that as well. So if I just have a block and have a torch on it, and it's sending power into the lamp, now the lamp's on. Okay, great. But, you know, generally speaking, you want to turn the lamp off every now and then. And if the torch is just sending power into it forever, you know, not exactly what I want. But if I send power to the redstone torch, you'll notice I can turn the torch off. 
That's the other thing about redstone torches. You can turn them off. And, it's, you know, if you want to have something that's by default on, and instead of having the lever, I don't know, just speculating here, if you have something that's just always on, and you, for some reason, say, okay, in this particular instance, I don't want it to be on, I can just turn off the torch like that. Easy enough. And again, like every other redstone thing, I can have wire that carries the power from some location to it. And in fact, I can even go have a torch that's sending power into the torch to turn the torch off. And I can even have a torch going into that, and I can pretty much go arbitrarily nuts like that. And that's one of the easy ways to get into some really complicated redstone that does something really simple, if you want, are into that for whatever reason. But yeah, there you go. Those are really the basics of the basics of redstone. You have the torches, which can send power continuously and can also be turned off. You have the repeater, which can both add delay to a redstone line and it can also renew a redstone signal. And you have the redstone dust, which can just carry power from location A to location B. And that's the pure basics of redstone. Now, in the next video, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about this, and really, after the next video, I should pretty much be done with the basics, and we'll be starting to move on to actual redstone functionality, making more advanced redstone devices. So, thank you. See you next time, where I'll pretty much just cover the, I guess you could call the slightly more advanced end of the basics. So, thank you. See you then.